Music history is coming to the big screen. A documentary called Queen City Kings takes a look at the life and legacy of the people around King Records. And joining us now to talk about the film and how people can get a first look is Jimmy Oyeterin with Afrosheen. Uh, that's the production company that's behind the film. And Jimmy, thanks so much for coming in and talking about this. This is a subject very close to my heart. Uh, uh, that, that, tell me how it is uh, that you decided that this was something you wanted to focus on with a documentary. Uh, well, it kind of was a project that slowly grew into a documentary. It was first a concert film where we uh, turned a couple spaces around Cincinnati, like the Contemporary Art Center uh, sure. and the Recording Studio of the Lodge, and we invited about 150 people to come and join our performance because we wanted to give an interactive experience of what it would have felt like to be in the studio at King. So we gave them 100. We gave each person uh, headphones, and they were able to hear all of the music on the uh, through their headphones. And from there, we started to realize that a lot of people were very interested in this interactive experience, and we wanted to bring it to a much bigger audience, so we added the documentary on top of that. Yeah, and people who research King Records, I think, will be amazed at the kind of impact and influence and how forward-looking this company was uh, in terms of its talent, in terms of how it uses talent. Yeah. Um, King innovated a lot of things in the music industry. At one point in time, it was the sixth largest um, record company in the country. And you know they introduced the guitar as a lead instrument to mm -hmm. music. They, uh, you have the twist, you have fever, you have man of constant sorrow. Um, there's so much things other than James Brown that was so uh, uh, influential. Yeah, I, w what I liked about uh, learning about King Records was the way uh, they kind of cross pollinated their talent. Like you'd have some of the country musicians playing on R&B records and R&B artists singing songs written by country artists. Yeah, um, it was originally kind of a move to save money because they'd owned the publishing. So instead of trying to find uh, another group to partner with, they decided to just switch it across the label. Um, and they were also an integrated company. So they're, yeah. in 1943, they were an inter racially integrated company and even went so far as uh, hiring 25 Japanese, um, Japanese Americans that were interned uh, after yeah. World War II. Um, and when you think about 1943, having a racially integrated company in 1943 here in Cincinnati, so when you hear the uh, apocryphal Mark Twain quote, sure. which isn't true, you know, uh, right. you know like ten you years wait later, yeah. 10 <laughs> years later and have, wait, it still happened in Cincinnati, that's not true. You have a perfect situation of um, Cincinnati taking civil rights and taking, taking on civil rights in 1943 well before the rest of the country did. Yeah. Uh, we only have uh, less than a minute left, but I want to get your take on well, we know about Motown, we know about Memphis, we know about Nashville, but we don't know about Cincinnati. That's true. Um, uh, King Records closed in 1968, and after mm -hmm. it closed, it uh, was bought by another company, which was then promptly bought by another company. Yeah. And because of the nature of it moving out of town, it never really got a following in Cincinnati. Um, as much as some of these other towns did. And then, you know, you had Stax Records, which the Rolling Stones really yeah. took on. Yeah. Um, and we never really got our own Rolling Stones, so it's really up to us as Cincinnatians to really take on this mantle. Okay, uh, very quickly, how can people see this? So we are going to be at the Esquire Theater this Thursday at 7.30, and then uh, we will be at the Kenwood Theater on Sunday at 2.30. All right, uh, in my opinion, you can't give King Records uh, too much uh, exposure. I mean, it's, it truly was a cultural force. It really was. It just did so many amazing things that changed American music as we know it. Everything is related to King. We're oh. here on the radio today. All right. Thank you so much for coming and talking about it.